welcome to Omega's experts chat on search engine optimization with David Ellis, the founder of Teranga, a digital marketing company based in London. At Teranga, they help B2B businesses to rank higher on Google and generate mind-blowing ROI with targeted SEO campaigns. David believes that SEO is one of the best long-term strategies to sustainably grow a business. My name is Tuti Bhatt. I'm an associate consultant at Omega, and I'll be moderating this conversation today. Hi, David. How are you doing? Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, doing really well, thank you. Yeah, David. Let's get right into it. Um, digital marketing industry is such a vast and dynamic industry, and it has seen unprecedented development over last decade. You know, with the new trends coming up in the industry, like omni-channel or the use of technologies like AI and automation in digital marketing. What importance do you feel that SEO holds in digital marketing industry as a whole? Great question, Stuti. I mean, I think it's, um, obviously I would say this, I run an SEO agency. Um, I think it's a very important channel. Um, right now, the primary, um, the primary platform that we we perform SEO on is Google. Um, but who knows, like technology is moving so quickly now. Um, things could change very quickly. It might be some metaverse search engine in the future, or um, we're doing more and more work on platforms like YouTube, which are kind of becoming more, more prominent. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think things move really fast. Often when people think of SEO now, we think about Google. Um, but you know, SEO is just the practice of getting your website or your company discoverable in whichever search engine you're being searched in. Um, so I, I can't see that going anywhere. I think the platforms will definitely change. Um, but I think there'll always be a place for SEO. Um, I'm one of these people. I like to look at things holistically. So although I run an SEO agency, um, I'm not going to pretend that it's the only channel that works, the only marketing channel that works. I think there's real benefits to a paid advertising side of your company. I think, um, you know, things like cold outreach, even cold calling and stuff works really well if you're in the right industry and and, um, and you're doing it well. Um, so, yeah, to answer your question, I think search optimization will probably always be a part of a marketing strategy for companies. That was really enlightening, actually, uh, to say that, you know, a search engine optimization is not only uh, limited to a platform, if uh, to say so, it is Google. Uh, it has, in future, it has its place, uh, whatever the platform be. So, yeah, uh, that was really informative. Uh, a lot of companies we see around, you know, have been using automatic content creation tools lately or you know have been involved in the practices like buying backlinks so what impact do you think that these practices have on search engine optimization um so i'll probably take a look at those two things separately um and content is a huge part of the seo process um it's always been an important part of an seo campaign is writing great content um, and nowadays, it's probably more important than it ever has been um, with the algorithm getting more intelligent to things like buying backlinks and stuff like that, which, you know, a few years ago was quite a good strategy to, to get quick results was just to buy a bunch of backlinks. Um, there is still a place in your campaign for link building, um, but it's not as prominent as it might have been a few years ago. And I mean, when it comes to content, it's, it's funny. Uh, I'd be lying if I, if I told you that I'm not really excited by some of the AI tools and like the, there's one called uh, Jarvis, I think, or Jasper might've got that wrong. I think it's called Jarvis. And there's a, a bunch of AI tools that, um, you know, will write content for you. Um, so I'm really excited by that because I think it will allow us to be more efficient over time. Um, they're not, in my opinion, good enough quite yet those tools to take over what a human being would do um, and so we still write all of our content manually we have a bunch of copywriters in our team who are great at, at writing 
really good SEO content. We make sure it's planned well and we make sure it's got a good structure and it's got, you know, we're targeting the right keywords. But the thing that you really need to do is write very valuable, interesting, great content. And at the moment, it's it's hard for a um, it's hard for a robot or a machine to do that. But then it can be done with a bit of a human intervention so that it does not lose the human touch in a way. Yeah, that's a great summary. Yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of exactly what I would say is that you you need to maintain that human element. Right. Um, but there are lots of tools that we can use to kind of help us move more quickly. Since we are talking about content here, um, like you said, initially, we saw a lot of web pages spamming their content with repetitive keywords in order to increase keyword density. So what role do you think that the originality or the relevancy of the content play in the ranking versus the keyword density? You have to be targeting the right keywords. There's no point in writing content if it's not got a structure and a strategy behind it, um, because it takes so much energy and effort to you know, write blog posts and create guides and stuff like that. It creates so much energy and effort that there isn't a whole lot of point in doing that if it's not going to rank properly. That's on the one hand. But then on the other hand, um, again, the algorithm is getting more and more intelligent and can recognize things like what would be called as like keyword stuffing and just, you know, artificially adding keywords where it doesn't really quite make grammatical sense and things like that. So historically, you used to be able to get really great results by just basically putting tons of keywords into a piece, even if it didn't make a lot of sense and it was a bit of a weird article to read. Nowadays, it, it has to be well-written. It has to be interesting. People have to actually want to read on. Um, and I think people, people can tell pretty quickly if a piece is written just only for SEO purposes. And the algorithm is getting much better at recognizing that as well. So we always tell people, and, and we write most of the content on behalf of our clients, so we kind of take ownership of that piece of the puzzle. But we always tell people to focus on value, um, ideally focus on original content, although sometimes it can be difficult to write 100% original content. There's a lot of things on the internet. <laughs> um, but you want to make it original. You want to try and make it in your tone of voice. Um, and yeah, ultimately focus on value rather than keyword stuffing or keyword density or any sort of short-term tactics. Uh, content is the integral part of the SEO. And in digital marketing industry, content is, you know, said to be the king for, you know, all the right reasons. Uh, if we bring value uh, and if we bring the uh, search intent of the, if we fulfill the search intent of the user, I think that, you know, content uh, is supposed to perform well. Yeah, I completely agree. Next question, David. Uh, but what, what impact do you think that the freshness of the content has on the search engine optimization? relevant content that's topical and you know that kind of thing that's obviously going to going to perform well um it's also best practice to go over old pieces and refresh them and right. and re-optimize if that's kind of what you mean it's actually uh going back to the original pieces who are you know who date back but then uh updating them with the current information mm. can you you know really drive traffic in later on too so that is something that I've experienced too. So that is really true. Yeah. The 2020 guide for local SEO, for example. And then what they do for 2021 is they just update it and re-optimize and then they do the same each year. So yeah, that's that's definitely best practice. David, I also believe that, you know, in a nutshell, an ideal web page uh, should answer two questions. Uh, does this uh, information really helps me? Or, you know, what action can I take to get my work done so yeah i mean content uh, does matters and you know cons consistently publishing relevant and quality content paired with uh, brightly researched keywords and matching those uh, keywords with the search intent of the user can bring amazing re results and uh, Apart from that, I also believe that it demands a lot of rigorous research and really diving into the uh, psychology of the audience that the website has. 
and however it can really be done uh, with proper work yeah absolutely yeah what uh, importance do you think that image optimization has on seo image optimization would fall so we have four levers of seo or the four levers of seo if if you're in america i think you usually say lever um the four levers are technical optimization on site optimization content writing and link building and basically what we mean is those are the four levers that you can pull that will generate results in seo so typically a good campaign is going to have elements of all four of those um image optimization would fall within the technical optimization of the website and this is often things like um your loading speed of your website um optimizing your images um making sure you don't have broken links uh, making sure your site map is registered properly with google and all that kind of stuff um i i have to admit my my uh, my knowledge of technical seo is probably a 5 or a 6 out of 10 like <laughs> i kind of leave my team to to manage that whole technical side of things but the point being a lot of this stuff happens on the back end of the website it's not it it won't necessarily change any of the design or any of the imagery or anything like that but it has a really significant impact on your rankings and something like image optimization can affect things like the loading speed of the website and that's quite a significant ranking factor because google is not going to promote a website that loads slowly because it will create a bad customer experience for the people who are landing on that website and therefore it's a pretty significant ranking factor um so to answer your question yes image optimization is important as part of the technical process and it does have an impact on your um on your rankings and this is one of the things that we've noticed so i'm kind of getting a little bit outside the question here but hopefully it's useful um this is one of the things we've noticed and why we have the four lever framework because often people will really focus let's say on the content lever and they'll be writing loads of content but if your website isn't technically optimized then you're not going to reach your full potential and so that's kind of why we like to look at everything in in quite a holistic way it was really uh, informative uh, great i mean we talked about a lot of things right from content website to image optimization um uh, now we know that the algorithms of google have uh, evolved over time as you mentioned earlier with respect to the factors that it considers to rank a web page There's hundreds of different ranking factors right right and um google isn't always transparent about the algorithm updates and all of that kind of stuff so it's very difficult to pinpoint specific things but my my message to anyone who's watching this would be to really focus on value so you know you want to make sure your website is technically optimized you want to make sure that it's it's structured well it's built around good keywords and stuff like that and focus on providing value to the customer with your content um because at the end of the day even if in the short term you have competitors who are using like link building like buying links or maybe they're doing other sort of like tactics to to get quick results the long term google cares most about value they care about the customer they care about the customer experience the people who are searching in the search engine and so optimizing on value is always going to win the day um in the long term so that would mean be my advice to anyone who's watching this now and uh yeah i agree i mean seo could not be approached as a task that has to be you know completed one time uh it is rather a continuous process and you know the best time to start working on it is at the onset so yeah uh, like you said if we talk about on page seo most of the businesses they make this mistake that you know they see a uh, website creation number 1 number 2 seo as a consecutive activity when ideally seo and uh, website creation are activities to be carried out parallelly but uh, all of these uh, factors come into play and uh, it is what affects the performance of the website at the end of the day it's been a real pleasure to to join you uh, today obviously if anyone wants to find me on linkedin if they have follow up questions then um please ask them to do that um but no thank you for thank you for your questions they've they've got me thinking today Uh thank you so much David for your time and the knowledge that you imparted today it was great